You thought I was lagging. You, sorry. Hello, college student. Welcome. Or maybe, you know, college student to be. Also welcome. Or maybe ex college student. That's creepy. You can get out respectfully. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is for everybody. That's not what I meant. You're probably thinking, why is this woman in a tablecloth giving me advice about college? I'm not. I just feel like I have a good mindset about college and I just want to give it. So like if you think that I'm incompetent, you're honestly, probably, you're right. So you can just leave. But if someone wants some mediocre advice on how to go through college, that's why I'm here. I'm gonna be jumping right into it. There's no time to waste. College students, your time is precious. Okay, even though you spend most of that precious time scrolling, your time is still precious. Kind of. I'm gonna try and outline what we're gonna talk about so that you know what's coming. Cause same, I don't like surprises. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna be talking about mindset. More specifically, the opportunistic mindset and the forced mindset. Because before you work on the outside, you have to work on the inside. <laughs> I made that on the spot myself and it sounds so deep. That's because it is figuratively and literally. And then we're going to be talking about goals. Goals. I love that word, but not in the way that you think. Okay. A lot of people think goals is like a list of goals. Like one, I want to be amazing. Two, I want to solve world hunger. Three, I'm going to cure cancer. And like you're majoring in art design or something like respectfully. That's not supposed to be a hit at the art design majors. I'm so sorry I took that hit. That was a really cheap shot. That's not the kind of goals I'm talking about. Uh, it's, it's a very broad topic, but I want to break it down so that it becomes more tangible and easier to apply, like actually apply and stick to and make it work for you. Uh, I'm going to get into that later. And then we're going to be talking about attitude. <laughs> Okay, everyone's got to fix their attitude sometimes. Most times, I would argue, actually. Some people really do have an attitude problem, but not in that way. I'm going to be talking about how you approach the school year, how you approach the semester. And, well, it's going to be it's gonna be intense. Are you guys ready? Buckle up for the ride. I'm going to be insulting you for the remainder of this video, respectfully, in, in a loving way, but also in a very judgmental way, but mostly in a judgmental way, I'll be honest. Starting off strong, let's talk about mindset. So I talked about how there's an opportunistic mindset and a forced mindset, but I'll get into that in a little more detail later. Right now, I wanna talk about this study. This study that has been around for God knows how long, cause I actually don't know, but it's been referenced a lot of times. And I think it's actually been a pivotal moment in psychology and is this paper that discusses anxiety and excitement. And the whole gist of the paper, what it's trying to get at is that the wiring, like the neural networks of your brain involving anxiety and excitement are nearly identical. They're almost the same. They're like, like if you put them next to each other, it's like find the difference. I love that puzzle. Find the difference. Can you imagine, just with that piece of information, the fact that anxiety and excitement are nearly the same, like they, they have the same effect on you, is crazy. Except one might lead to your downfall and the other might make you a whole completely different version of yourself that's a lot more successful. Because when we're excited, we tend to do a lot of stupid things, but they're also admirable in a sense. And this paper is called get excited reappraising pre-performance anxiety as excitement it's talking mostly about like the jitters before you know a big performance so like presenting something or or being on stage or something like that you just have this anxiety you know this built-in stress this built-up anxiety the paper talks about methods like approaches you can take to switch from anxiety to excitement and it says that Using minimal strategies such as self-talk, so saying I'm excited out loud, or simple messages like get excited, which lead to more excitement. This helps you adopt an opportunity mindset instead of a threat mindset. 
So you don't feel like there's a threat coming towards you where when you're on stage, you feel like you're going to fail or flop or you're giving a presentation and you think you're going to say a word wrong and everyone's going to laugh at you and mock you for the rest of your life. That's a threat mindset. An opportunistic mindset is knowing the good benefits, the good everlasting consequences after the performance, after it's done. You know, and keeping that in mind is really important. So starting this semester, just going into the semester with no end in mind is not going to help you get through very well, if I'm being honest. So when I like to go into the semester, I really like to prep myself already for the final. Like I'm literally visioning myself in the final room exam just because... I know that what I'm learning right now is going to be on that exam in the future, you know, and I would actually argue that there is another strategy that you can add and it's visioning your success, visioning yourself, imagining yourself succeeding in whichever way that may be, you know, in the case of students, we all want straight A's. We all want the most awesome, awesomest grade book that, you know, any workplace would look at. And they'll be like, wow, you were amazing. And you'll be like, I know. Yeah, because confidence, baby. But that's not the topic of today's video. <laughs> Even though I'm very passionate about it, I think you can tell. Going back to this idea of envisioning your success, seeing yourself succeed at the end of the year. One thing I like to do, and this might be a little uh, too much. It, like, it might be a little extreme for some people. But whenever exam season comes, Whenever I have a study session, before I start any study session, I sit down and I literally imagine myself in the test room because we're, we're like, we know where we're going to take the test, you know, what room we're going to take the test in. So I envision myself in that room, in a particular seat that I'm going to get that day if I get the chance to get the seat I want that day. You know, and I use the same pencil or pen on that same day. And so I just envision all of these things and I envision success with it. So like I pair up success with that circumstance, with that kind of imaginary room that I set up in my head where I'm taking the test, taking the exam. And every time I envision that before a study session, it almost like, you know, shakes me and makes me realize like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, going to use all of this information that I'm learning right now like the information all the answers are in front of my eyes you know so I'm going to try my hardest to just scan them and then just print them on my brain because what you're doing is come test day you don't have the jitters because you already envision yourself in that seat like a thousand times you know you already know what's going to happen you already know you're going to sit down they're going to pass the papers you're going to write your name and whatever and then you're going to flip to the first page and it's going to be multiple choice and you're going to see the questions it's like it takes you back to your study sessions quite literally you know and as i said this is a bit extreme it's an extreme approach but what it helps you do is calm down i i see a lot of people when they take a test like they start panicking or they start heavy breathing or or they they just don't breathe properly and they're all just like hunched over on their paper you know probably writing something on the table because they don't know the answer so it's like it's hard to see that because it clearly shows they were not prepared i'm sorry that's the harsh truth they probably weren't prepared you know so it's good to at least know where you're going to be, what you're going to do. Know the circumstances that you're going to inevitably be in. Moving on to a uh, forced and opportunistic mindset. Now, I think these terms speak for themselves. I don't think they need that much explanation, but I'm still going to try and explain them in my crooked manner. So everything, every day, you have choices. You, you are presented with choices. Say you have a lecture at 8 a.m. Are you going to go to that lecture or not? You know, a forced mindset would be, I have to go to the lecture. Now, mind you, yes, you do. There is probably going to have attendance and, well, you don't want your grades going down because you're not showing up. So, yes, in a sense, you probably have to go. That's a forced mindset. In essence, it is the basis of the matter. You do have a choice but 
I mean, if you do want to succeed, which I know you do, you're going to go. Okay. So in a way you are kind of forced because you want the best for yourself. But there is this thing called the opportunistic mindset where despite forcing yourself, despite knowing full well that you're not going to give yourself the choice to not go, you still have the choice in how you want to think about it on how you want to approach the matter, how you want to go about your day the next day at 8 a.m. Do you know what I mean? So like you're in control of your thoughts, you're in control of your mind when it comes to that point. Yes, when you wake up, you might feel groggy. I mean, that's the human body. But when you wake up, you also have the chance to say, I'm grateful. You also have the chance and the choice. You also have the choice to say, I want to go. Not I have to go, I want to go. Because switching your mindset from I have to to I want to, or not even I want to, I like another one better and it goes I get to. So not I I have to go, I get to go. And I know I get to go comes from like the white therapists that are like, be grateful, but they have a point, be grateful. Like you do get to go. Some people don't get to go. And I mean, we're not even talking about other people right now. There may be circumstances in your life in the future, God forbid, that won't allow you to go. You won't get to go. But right now in in your life, right now where you are, you get to go. You are actually allowed to. The cosmos have made it in a way so that you get to go. When you think like that, it just feels like every every door is opening up for you. So instead of saying, Ugh, I need to go to class and I need to get ready before and I need to eat something before I leave. Instead, you can say, today is a new day. Today is a new opportunity. I'm honestly happy to be alive. But dude, that's another topic. Happy to be alive. Do you know how many people don't make it after their sleep? They don't. They just perish in their sleep. It's like bye-bye, night-night, you know? And God meant that. It was like, boom, lights off. That's it down the grave but respectfully that's not what I'm getting at you get a new day it's a brand new day you know and you wake up and it's a wonderful day to learn something new because guess what if you want to build something amazing you have to learn things you know or you just have to know things as a prerequisite to build something amazing so do you want to build something amazing or do you just want to be pathetic for the rest of your life Well, okay, I wouldn't say pathetic, but just like you have the resources, you have the knowledge at the tip of your fingers, but you choose to be pessimistic about it. Like, ugh, I have to. No, you don't have to. You get to. You little piece of, "Mm." I'm not going to curse because, well, first of all, I don't curse. But second of all, because I don't think it's effective. Anyway, you get to. And when you adopt that mindset, it honest, it switches everything up. And this is not only for college students. This is only also for people who, who go to work. You get to. Yes, there's traffic. Yes, it's nasty. Yes, you don't want to stay in the car for too long and have people honking at you from the back because you go slow at speed bumps. Yes, I know that's specific. I am that kind of person. But that's not important. It's just that you get to. And I know I keep repeating that, but it's really, once you adopt this mindset, it's, it opens up a whole new world for you because you only live once in this life, you know, and you know, this life is not like everything, everything, but you only have one of it. And then another one after that. And you know, the one after it is the real one, but this one's also, you need to build stuff, some stuff, you know? So be excited about it. Be attentive to it. Like, come at it and approach it with the best mindset so that what you build has that effect on other people. Next, now we're going to talk about goals. And before you say anything, it's not a set of bullet points. Well, okay, it is. But it's not just that. When we talk about goals, we're talking about Something that constitutes your entire day. Every day for however long you need it to be to achieve that goal. And well, to be frank, that's a big deal. It's not like you get excited, you write 
I'm going to cure cancer, and then you wait for something to happen because unfortunately that's not how it works. You have to construct a system. And James Clear talks about this in his book, Atomic Habits. Now, I talk about this book a lot because I freaking love it. It's one of the books that I think almost everyone and anyone can benefit from because it's it's so applicable in so many ways. He gives you so many different kinds of strategies that you're like you're bound to pick one because they're literally all good um and there's this free chapter that he literally uploaded on his website i'm gonna link it down in the description but he talks about this extensively he talks about how you shouldn't construct goals you should construct systems because what is a system in essence a system is how you go about your day how your day looks like you know from one hour to one hour let's say for example it doesn't have to be like that it could be in terms of blocks like block one block two block three for muslims it could be in between prayers so like between between this prayer and this prayer i'm going to do this between the other prayer and the last prayer i'm going to do this so thinking about it in terms of systems you know you block your day in a specific way and you set a block for something specific or a set of specific tasks that are gonna help you accomplish your goals. And this is what people think of when they say goals. But here's the thing, goals is what you wanna achieve at the end. It's not the bigger picture. It's, it's kind of like part of the picture, you know, but systems show you the entire picture. They, they show you the entire map, okay? And he talks about how Winners and losers have goals. They both have goals. So what separates the loser from the winner? Or I should say, what separates the winner from the loser is the fact that winners have a system. Winners have something set in place that they're going to follow every single day to achieve that goal. You know, And, and we're not perfect. We're humans. We're going to have some margin of error. But it, there's a system. There's you know an organized set of things that you have to follow so that your goals become a reality because just writing down your goals is not going to make it a reality god i wish that was the case but it's not you know writing them down might motivate you it might make you eager to start you know eager to get going and and make a change in your life but it's not going to be the thing that drives you into motion and if i'm being honest it's not going to be the thing that motivates you till the end You know, you're going to look back at your goals and say, I don't understand why it's not working. Like, I'm trying everything. No, all you did was write a sentence down of what you want to do or what you want to be. That's not going to do anything. You have to write down how you're going to do it, what you're going to do, in in what order are you going to do it, in what time of the day are you going to do it, where are you going to do it. There's literally a system in place to figure out all of these micro details so that your goals become actual action and i know that's just a lot of jumbled words but making your goals into reality requires this string of action you know if 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 goals are not connected to the string it's not going to connect to reality the like goals and reality will have no connection to each other the only connection between those two is action And he talks about one specific instance that I think is super interesting where it's called the implementation intention. So for example, let's say I want to learn a new language. My goal is to learn a new language. Or actually, no, let's make it relevant to college. I forgot we're talking about college. I got so carried away. We're talking about college, right? So let's say I want to master a specific skill in a class. I can't just write down, I want to be good. For example, let's say programming. I want to be good at C++. That's not going to magically happen. You know, implementation intention, what it helps you do is it helps you figure out the micro details to your plan. So when am I going to program? Uh, Let's say between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Okay, where am I going to program? I'm going to program exactly right here in the desk in the corner of my room. That's exactly where I'm going to program. What days am I going to program? You could schedule it bi-daily or daily or, you know, I recommend it being an almost daily thing because that helps you reach your goal faster. 
but you know it's up to the person and their liking but let's say for example i want to program every day not including fridays or saturdays for example so now you have a system you now you have a set of clear things and instructions to follow so i'm going to program almost every day from 1 p.m to 2 p.m exactly in the corner of my room at my desk where i focus best that's it that's the implementation intention is just figuring out how you're gonna do it where you're gonna do it because then remember when i talked about envisioning success you're envisioning yourself in that scenario so every single day when you think about coding you think about the specific spot that you code at you think about the specific time at which you code all of these things help like reaffirm it in your brain that this habit is going to stick you know but you have to show up. You can't show up when you feel like it. I mean, none of this works if you just follow the, your feelings. Like, that's never going to help you reach anything. You do have to force yourself. Some days are going to be slow. Some days are going to be better. And that's fine. But the most important thing is that you stick to the days. You don't go according to your feelings. Because, honestly, if you do so, you're not going to reach anything. Remember, there's a link in the description that links to James Clear's first chapter of atomic habits which talks about this and i really recommend that you read it it just talks about systems as opposed to goals but i think the implementation intention is a little deeper into the book but again it's just this book as a whole i recommend it and i think it's for anyone who really who wants to make a change right now and is willing to invest themselves in it the third and final part of this video is to be proactive yes i know that's like the banner at your high school that you used to loathe looking at going up the stairs which is very specific also but yes be proactive and that's the attitude that i was getting at at the beginning of this video i talked about attitude going into you know this semester and being proactive is something that you only ever start to learn when you are in something that you like. So if hopefully you major in something that you enjoy or it's something that you're passionate about or you're really good at, you are going to have to learn proactivity because this is going to be your livelihood. Like you have to be good at this thing, you know? And this shift from high school, like this transition from high school to college is a big deal. It's a big deal. And I think we do mark it as a big deal like it's not an overrated or underrated thing it's just a big deal and that's because before in high school you go to this institution where every day it's from 8 a.m to 3 p.m for example every single day that's it no questions asked you can act sick sometimes but that's it you have to go every day and then you go to start going to this institution like a year after you're done where it's like, okay, you get to pick your classes now. You get to pick when you want to go. And and just like you have the option, which is absurd. Like it's not, I don't think that's a normal thing for a high school student to realize, to like fully grasp because they're like, what is this new freedom? You know, but when we continue down the road of college, you know, we get bound by classes and everything. But still, we need to recognize the fact that we get to choose. We're always choosing, just like I said. But with this new sense of freedom, with this new, you know, ability to choose where, when you want to go, this also has to come with a sense of proactivity. Like, it's not just showing up for class, but it's that now you have a responsibility to look out for yourself and if you're understanding or not because technically speaking you can sleep in class well i'm not encouraging it but i'm just saying that you can sleep in class you know and the professor if your professor is chill probably wouldn't care i know my professors are definitely not chill but you know they sometimes will let it slide and they won't care but if you're back in high school and they see you sleeping or are just tired they would be like hey wake up you're here to learn and you're like i don't want to learn but you are your parents paid for this not always but sometimes i, I went to international schools well that's another story anyway anyway um yeah so you're there to 
it's kind of like a forced environment, I'd say. High school. High school is kind of like a forced environment. Whereas college is up to you. N- not going to college is up to you. Please go to college. It's it's okay. Like, it's good. But don't go to an expensive one because that sucks. Oh my god, I keep going into tangents. This is so bad. But you need to be proactive. You need to go and seek knowledge. You can't just be spoon-fed the information by your professors. Which is why, by the way, I don't really care for what professors I have in my classes. I mean, unless, you know, I come across a professor that, like, changes my life for the better, I try not to get too attached to professors because then what happens if I if I get like a really bad professor or like a claim to be bad so like a notorious professor because they're known uh, to be really harsh or they're known to grade really really harshly they're known to be super super boring in class whatever it may be I try not to attach myself to the professors because at the end of the day they're just trying to get through the syllabus and well, they're not going to care for each and every student. That's that's the reality. So it's really, I'm serious when I say this, it's up to you to learn. You know, you are going to be taught some things in the lectures, sure. But you have to be the one that goes and seeks it. Because then when you do that, it's actually going to stick. And not only is it going to stick, it's, it's only ever going to feed your passion more and more. Because when you know things already and they're being taught in class, you already know them. So it's it's already by default just more interesting hearing someone talk about it, even if they're not talking about it in a, in a very interesting way. It's just that you know what they're talking about, which is nice. And be advanced. Go ahead of the syllabus. I mean, I, I see people connecting themselves so much to the syllabus because they just want to perform well at exams. And I mean, I get that. But I mean, if you are genuinely passionate about the thing that you study, go outside the syllabus. Easy. For example, with me, I'm trying to code games now because that's freaking fun. You know, that's not in the syllabus whatsoever, but it's fun. You know, and it's, you know, a new initiative that I'm trying to take on myself. But it's this part of myself where I'm being proactive, but I'm also making it fun at the same time. And I'm sure there's a way you can do that with your own thing as well. Because trust me when I say this, when you are proactive, you're making it easier on yourself. You're making it super easy. The The things that you learn become second nature. You don't have to think hard like, oh, what was on page 27 of, of you know, PowerPoint number three? Oh God, I wish I remember. You don't need to remember because you already know. You know it like your second name, which is really nice come exam day i mean who doesn't want that that's like a superpower and this goes back to the idea of structuring your day you know when you're being proactive you're actively putting something in your day that's going to contribute to your knowledge or experience or or sense of a specific topic you're contributing time to that you're being proactive you know so this goes back to how are you structuring your day what is your system you know, what are you, what time pockets do you have throughout the day that, you know, can be filled with something more useful, something fun, but also something useful. You know, I'm, I'm looking at you people who scroll. Yeah, well, I scroll too, but really, I try not to, and I know it's hard, but we really have to pay attention to that. And we need to make sure that there are parts of the day that we contribute to knowledge, because knowledge is very, very important. And there's this Arabic like saying or proverb that goes, "Ent bimashik." So you run the day, or the day is gonna run you. You know, it's really up to you. Like, are you the one that's gonna be in charge of the day, structuring the day, organizing your things, like knowing what you're gonna do in each hour? Not, not to, not to the like tiniest second right microsecond i'm talking in general terms like in terms of hours in terms of blocks you know but it's good to know what you're doing with your time because you can get really good at what you're studying by the way it's just most people choose not to do that because they just want to do well enough to get by and that's fine be well enough by the way 
I wouldn't say getting straight A's is like the gold mine of everything. I would argue that it's fine to get B's or whatever. It's fine as long as you get the specialization that you want. But do something outside of college that contributes to the thing that you want to learn. You know, be it your major, be it something else, by the way. But make sure that you're actually being proactive about it. Because if you're not, no one's going to come to save you. No one's going to do the work for you. You have to do the work yourself. And that's exciting. That's a really exciting prospect. Whenever I think about that, whenever I, I realize that I'm in charge of what I get to do in my day, I mean, oh my God, I could fly through the roof. I could jump off a building. I'm not going to do that, but I could if I wanted to. That's the most exciting part. Ugh, that's a great way to cap off the video. I think that's a really excellent way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you got something beneficial out of this video. This isn't really for college students, I'll be honest. I delved deep, so deep into it that I started talking to almost everyone. But I'm still going to title it for the college students because, because well, hearing this when you're in college really helps. You know, it really, really helps. A lot of people struggle in this time of their lives. And, you know, it's just a matter of sitting down and organizing your thoughts in turn organizing your life you know and you're not gonna have everything figured out no one has everything figured out but it's nice to at least know where you're headed it's nice to know what your day consists of and how you're structuring your day a lot of people just ignore that part and then they wonder why things are not going their way they wonder why they feel so incompetent or or it's like they just don't have a, a sense of purpose or identity so yeah, that's my two cents. That's my 50 cent for you. And I hope you guys have a lovely day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.